Welcome back to What Arty Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Jagdpanther. It's a tier 7 German tank destroyer and it's located on the north spawn of Ruhmberg Encounter. And it's under the command of Brian Pans. Now I think I can see the 10.5 centimeter gun, which is a pretty lethal gun. And it's mounted on the VK3002 chassis which is the MAN chassis that was devised for the Panther and it's got, instead of a turret, it's got a casement around it and he's taking aim in the bushes downrange. Now the Yag Panther does come with uh, four different types of gun one which is 75mm, another 88mm, or in fact two which are 88mm and of course the one that Brian Pans is using which is the 10.5cm gun which is the lethal one. Now, as I say, this is an encounter battle and some of the enemy tanks have actually made their way already into the Central Avenue. T-71, a Comet and a Cromwell. And we've got a Panzer IV H further in, but we can't see them because we're out in the field at the moment. But he's got some targets turned up and there's a Stug 3 and a KV-1. They're currently behind the buildings, but I did briefly see the Stug 3 so he's feathering his uh, reticule to see if he can get a name on them. Nothing so far. Oh, one was coming close. So the KV-1 looked as if he was about to cross the road. That would be a very bad mistake if he did. Now, Brian's using 24 rounds of AP and 16 rounds of heat. So, no, not heat, sorry, HE. What am I saying? He's not carrying any premium ammunition at all. And uh, that does give one uh, a lot of respect to a player who actually does not take any premium ammo. He's going to play the game. Oh, missed the chance on the Stug 3 there. And it looks like T-3485 went across the road as well. But a lot of respect to players who do play this way. And he gets a 313 hit points hit into the T-34. That one sliced straight through him. And he finds the Stug, but for some reason he doesn't hit the target there. Don't know where that shell went. It's feathering to try and get a shot. No, not yet. KV-1 off to one side. Hasn't got a shot on him. Oh, yes he did for a brief second there. There's the, there's the KV-1's outline. I think you can just see the uh, left side of its vehicle. And there's the Stug 3 and he's moving. He's, I think he's going to town. And oh my god, look, 278 and he's tracked him. He's holding him in place. Next round will finish him off, but he's gone. He was taken out by the uh, Type 62. Now we're also having some success in the city because uh, some of the enemy tanks in there have actually been wiped out as well. Now the enemy is uh, capping. There's a Cromwell. Oh, no, the round didn't go near it. He's only got a, the briefest part of that Cromwell available, but he has been tracked. And that round does go in. 285 hit points. Looks like it went into the engine bay area. The Cromwell's pulled back into cover. He's turning to face the KV-1. Who's still at the crossroads. He's poking his head around the corner, that KV-1. And the enemy does have two in the cap at the moment, intermittently. But, oh, it looks like it's, things have gone bad in the city because now the Skoda T24 is the only one left in there. And he's being chased away from the cap area. And yeah, it looks like he's surrounded now because he's got Panzer 4H behind him and in front of him. And he's been killed. So the enemy now has the town. Whilst we have most of the field, except for, of course, the, city, the village, where the KV-1 is still being taken out by the other Jagdpanzer IV. So, what are we going to do about this? Well, the KV-1 is moving in our direction, funnily enough. And that Cromwell's gone down, the one we fired at. And there's the KV-1. He's now in our sights. We can get him. And that goes straight through the tracks and wipes him out. 93 hit points. Right, now. 
loaded, ready to go. It's got a 7.08 second reload, which is quite fast if you think about it. The comets are around the corner, but those buildings are in the way. There's an SU-100, and there was an SU-100. 304 hit points. That shell went straight through the casemate. He didn't survive that one. No, not a chance. Shell was going to wipe him out completely. Now, moved into a position where we might have to be able to have a go at the comet. The enemy is capping. We do need to think about that. It's going to take them slightly longer because this is an encounter battle. But we also need to think about moving in and taking out some of these enemies. And there's the comet. Can he get him? Yes! Oh, beautiful shot. 266. Wipes him out. One go. And I think that was three in a row. That's a Reaper, I believe. Because he took out the KV-1, then he took out the SU-100, then he took out the Comet. Now, actually, he just wiped out the Hellcat too. The Hellcat was in the cap. And he just took him out when he was firing in a different tank. And he's got the Panzer 4H now as well. My god, this is good. Now, T-34. Trying to get a shot on him. Difficult. He's behind the building. Oh, just took a big hit. That was from the enemy M44, the RT. He's up the other end of the map. And he must know where uh, where Brian is. So he's going to have to move. I think the T-34 was spotting for the M44. Okay, there's the SU-5. Uh, he's going to have to turn to face that. That's going to expose his flank to the T-34, but he can't hit the SU-85. So he's going to have to make a decision. Which way does he go? Go after the T-34 or the SU-85? Well, I go to the T-34 because uh, he's less hit points. But Brian is actually staying still. Now, maybe he's banking on the fact that the um, SU-85 and the M-44 don't know precisely where he is. And the T-34 might venture out to find out where he is and get killed. Nope, Brian's going to go for it. He's going to go for the T-34. Hasn't seen him for a little while. Needs to pay him a visit. If he is still hiding behind there, he's going to get a bit of a shock when he's faced with a 10.5 centimetre gun. Nope, somebody's in the cap and I suspect that that's the SU-85. There's the T-34. Oh, he fails that one. And now Arty Rounds may be about to arrive. He needs to get this right. He takes a hit from the T-34. And another round from the SU-85. He got the uh, the T-34 now. But he needs to get into cover. Because Arty Rounds might be about to hit him. There's the SU-85. Fires around in misses. It must be the M-44 in the cap. It must be. Yes, there he is. That's why he didn't fire. Fires around in, over the monument, into the M44, takes about one shot. There is now only one enemy left, the SU-85. And between the SU-85 and the Jagdpanther, I pick the Jagdpanther every time. And that's why he wins the game, takes out the last enemy. And that is also a Radley Walters. And I think a high caliber. So let's have a look at the end of battle results. Oh, look at this. It's a first class tanker for Brian Pans and the Yag Panther. He also picked up a Reaper medal for actually taking out uh, more than one tank consecutively. In fact, actually, he, he took out four consecutively. I seem to recall the KV-1. He took out the SU-100. He then took out the Comet. And then he took out the Hellcat by mistake uh, while he was still in the gap. Uh, so, a fantastic Reaper medal there. He picked up a Duelist medal for uh, taking down two tanks that did damage to him during the battle. A Fire Throw effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. A Radley Walters for getting at least eight kills, and he did get eight kills spectacularly. And a Top Gun for getting at least six kills. And finally, a Defender medal, because the tanks he took out that were capping at the time accumulated more than 70 defense points for Brian Pans and a win eight for the battle of 5652 and just look at the number of targets that he hit there yep that's a huge number so let's have a look at team scores well he didn't do the highest damage in the battle surprisingly although it appeared that he'd actually picked up the high caliber he didn't 
Um, he only got 2,340 hit points of damage. The SU-100 that he took out did 2,671. So at the time that he, I thought that he'd actually picked up the high caliber, the SU-100 then went past him. And even though Brian Pants took out the SU-100, he couldn't score enough hit points to qualify to get the high caliber. So at least the SU-100M gets the uh, consolation prize of getting courageous resistance and bumping up his scores. Um, now, Brian Pans did manage to get eight kills, which is the highest in the battle. More than double the highest score on the enemy team, which was the SU-100. Again, he managed to get four kills. And again, more than double the highest score on his own team, which was the Type 62 with three. And when it came to base XP, again, he got top of the score with 989. Uh, the highest the enemy could get was 650. And again, that was by the SU-101 uh, M1. So let's have a look at detail report. Well, he fired 16 rounds during that battle. He got 11 direct hits, 11 penetration. Just shows how good that gun is at getting the shell through the armor if he can get it into the armor in the first place. He did damage at 2,340 hit points, of which 1,212 were at more than 300 meters. He did receive six hits during that battle and four of them penetrated, two of them non-penetrated. He blocked damage of 360 hit points. He spotted one enemy vehicle, I think that was the M44 at the end of the battle. Uh, he hit and damaged 10 of the enemy, two thirds of the enemy team, and he killed eight of the enemy team. That was more than half of the enemy team. He did damage assistance of 72 hit points. He got 93 defense points whilst they were capping by resetting the cap. And he earned 24,647 credits on a standard account and after repair, ammunition resupply and consumables, he took away only 1,392 credits. But remember, he was firing standard AP. He wasn't firing any premium ammunition because he didn't have any loaded in the in the Jag Panther. And that uh, shows uh, I have tremendous respect for anybody who does that, goes into battle with no premium ammo because they are relying on their skill to get them through. He received five bonds for all the awards he did get, and uh, and he well deserved those bonds. Um, I believe those were for the um, um, for the Radley Walters, the Top Gun, and the Defender. And I think the, these two are for one a piece, and this is for three bonds. Um, so very good for getting five. He earned 989 base XP times two for the first victory of the day. So he took away 1,978 XP altogether. So a fantastic battle there by Brian Pans and congratulations. Uh, if you've got a Yag Panther, do, do play around with it. They are great fun. Uh, tier seven TD. So you are going to see probably tier eight opponents. But uh, if you have as much fun as Brian did, then I'm sure you're going to enjoy that ga that game. So, uh, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it will be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.